Okay, let's talk about daily practice. Now, first of all, why is daily practice important? Um, any kind of spiritual or magical practice, lifestyle, uh, is kind of like exercising a muscle. And if we don't exercise the muscle, we kind of get weak. And it's very much the same thing here. If you are not doing a daily practice of some kind, some kind of energy work or meditation or you know anything which fits into training yourself uh, as a spiritual person or as a magician, um, whatever that may be or look like, um, then when you get to doing the actual work, the actual magical practice going into ritual or rite, you're going to find it's not as beneficial, um, the effects are not as good, you are not as strong as you could be. And that's why we, we should be doing a magical practice. And this magical practice or daily, daily spiritual practice um, is really exercising. Uh, as you would go to gym to exercise your body, you simply do a daily practice which exercises your spiritual body um, and your spiritual mind. Now, when it comes to a daily practice, there are probably going to be times where you just do not feel like doing it at all. Um, you may choose to get up earlier to do your daily practice and there's just going to be moments where you just want to sleep in and you just want to give up and not just not do it at all and it's exactly the same I mean we're, we're exactly the same with doing exercise going for a walk jogging every day going to gym every day there's going to be moments where you just don't feel like putting your shoes on and go, getting out there but what we do is we either allow that to um, or allow ourselves to go through that or we force ourselves and there's benefits and disadvantages to either of these if you just allow yourself to go with the flow allow yourself to go with it the, you know, as i said there's going to be moments you may be feeling low energetically even though you've been doing a practice um, you may be feeling depressed, you may be feeling um, like it's just not worth it anymore. And that's fine. Don't beat yourself up about it, first of all. Uh, we all go through it um, over and over and over again. And the thing to remember is that it doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you're human. And there's nothing wrong with being human, after all. Some humans, maybe, but majority or the people that watch this channel, you're all good humans. So allow yourself to realize that you're just going through this process. You're just going through this downtime and you either go with it and just not do the practice and then pick it up again later or you can force yourself to do it. And I think that, that forcing yourself to do it is probably better because if you are going through a period where you are low on energy or you are feeling depressed even though you don't want to do it just you know even if you don't do your your whole daily practice just do something even if it's just five or ten minutes just each day this creates a sense of accomplishment um, even if you're not feeling it at the time um, but just a small accomplishment can make a huge huge difference and that will allow you to get out of that depression or out of that low energy or whatever it may be a lot quicker so you know you you, you might want to sleep in allow yourself to sleep in every now and again you know, don't beat yourself up about it doesn't mean you failed doesn't mean there's anything wrong it just means that you're just going through a process that's all so an actual daily practice what does that look like that's going to look different for each person uh, it's going to depend on your availability um, what uh, your day basically looks like there are some people who just find it impossible to squeeze five minutes in um, and you know we we often see you know get up 15 minutes early or you know 
just switch the TV off for 15 minutes or something like that. Um, yes, the majority of the cases we can say that, you know, just there is, there is five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere in your day that you can find to do some kind of practice. Um, there are some people who are, however, that uh, just cannot. Um, I did um, speak to somebody quite some time back actually, who was trying to create a daily meditation practice. And um, I asked him to tell me what his day looked like. <laughs> it was really, I mean, he was only getting like four or five hours sleep and then he'd get up, he'd uh, get breakfast, he'd get ready, he'd go to work, he'd come home, he would have to take care of something or other, uh, which was important. It's not something he could stop, he could drop. Um, and then when he was finished, he went to bed and got another four or five hours sleep. So to try and find time in a schedule like that, it was practically impossible. Um, I did suggest that during lunchtime, he just take five or 10 minutes and just sit silent, silently and meditate in, in that time. So there probably is 10 minutes you can find somewhere in, in, the, in your 24 hour day um, that you can find to actually do some kind of daily practice. Now, what do we want to do in this daily practice? That again, depends on you, depends on what system you're working with, what you're trying to accomplish in your daily life, your, your, your normal mundane life, and together with your spiritual life, with your magical life. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. I've been practicing or, or testing different um, daily techniques for years now or daily practices and um, I think I've found one it definitely works for me let's put it that way it's probably not going to work for everybody because it it does take um, I mean I, I get up at 4 a.m um, and again I'm going to say there are times when I do not do this I sleep in I just have a week or something where I just I just can't do it I just can't get up and I notice, I absolutely notice the difference. If I do not do my daily practice, I am grumpy. I am just horrible during the day. Um, I don't get as much accomplished. I don't, don't have the same drive. I don't have the same motivation. Um, so I do know that if I don't do my daily practice, I'm just going to be useless. Um, so I do, you know, during those times when I just do not feel like it, I do try and force myself to get up at 4am and do what I'm supposed to do. Um, so I'll get up at 4am. Uh, I will not switch my computer on. I found that if I switch my computer on, I end up scrolling through Facebook and then an hour's gone by and I've missed a whole section of, of my daily practice. So I'll get up, I will not switch the computer on. I will grab a cup of coffee. I am a coffee addict. I will grab my cup of coffee and I'll read a book for half an hour. Then I will go and brush my teeth and take a shower. Now, the reason for that specifically um, is not just to cleanse. Um, there's some very specific things about brushing your teeth in Ayurvedic practice. And if we go into Hindu and Ayurvedic practices, um, a morning shower is part of a normal daily routine or, or a daily bath, a morning bath. Um, the reason for this is that the between 4 and 6 a.m., um, we are active in the Satwik energy. And the Satwik energy is very much connected with spirituality with with um it's very calm um it is very beneficial for us um so this is a perfect time between 4 a.m and 6 a.m um to do meditation practice to do spiritual practices and the reason for the for the shower that i take in the morning is that water is a good conduct conductor of energy and so I use that water um, to kind of allow that satwic energy to flow over me, um, to take it in, to cleanse me. So I'm not just washing uh, with, with soap and what, I don't have much hair, so I don't really wash my hair. Um, I don't really just wash with the soap to, you know, 
just have a normal shower. I also wash with a Satwick sat sat Energy. Um, getting very muddled lately. I think I've lost, keep losing my words. Um, so it, it's a very cleansing shower. Wash off, wash off all of that energetic negativity as well. Um, then after the shower, I'll then go and do um, meditation and mantra. Um, that specifically does change um, over periods. I may be working with a different spirit or a different deity at a particular time on some things. So I'll sit down and I'll do a mala of, um, uh, of chanting mantra for that specific spirit deity. Um, and then I'll take the rest of the time. So that's, that's about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I'll take the rest of the time just to do some silent meditation. And then I will, what, what it was previously, um, I've changed it recently, but what it was previously, I'll then do um, Qigong for about 20 minutes and then I start my day. Um, what I'm doing now is I have been wanting to work on dream work, specifically lucid dreaming again and different techniques. So what I'm doing now after my meditation, I'll then go back to bed for an hour and a half and um, do dream work. And there's a very good, um, well, it's a very good technique. Um, so what happens is you, 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 you wake yourself up, you stay awake uh, long enough to actually sort of wake yourself up, but not completely. Um, and it's usually like half an hour. Um, mine is obviously a bit longer. Um, and then you go back to bed and you um, set the alarm clock for two hours. And then you get up again and you, you do that again. But also um, doing this early morning uh, at sunrise or just before sunrise. Um, I am going, well, I am in summer now, so my sunrise is a bit early. Um, but usually it's round about this time. Um, but just before sunrise is a great time for dreaming. So instead of continuing your sleep through, you know, one big block of sleep of, of seven hours or eight hours um, and still being in a sort of a deep sleep uh, state when you are trying to dream in the early mornings you wake yourself up and then you go back to bed and you don't go into a deep sleep you go into a light sleep and this is brilliant for lucid dreaming so I'll do that I'll do my meditation and then I'll go back to bed for an hour and a half and I'll work on my my dreaming and then I'll get up and have breakfast and start my day. Um, so that's about, uh, I get up at seven then, and I said, I've already brushed my teeth, I've already had my shower, um, so I don't need to go do those. And yeah, so I just start my day, have my breakfast and wash the dishes. So I start my day around about 8, 8 a.m., uh, my work day itself. And yes, that's it. Um, then that's the morning practice anyway. So the evening practice I find has become a bit more difficult. Um, I have a few things that I do during the evenings that are, that are necessary um, on different days. Um, so it becomes a bit irregular, but what I do try and do is um, at least try and do half an hour of silent meditation if there's not spe any specific um, magical work that I wanna do. Um, if there is specific magical work that I want to do, then I'll do that, obviously. So that's about half an hour to an hour, uh, probably in the evenings. Um, and I try, usually try to do that around about 8 a.m. Oh, sorry, 8 p.m. But that does, as I said, it alters, it differs. Uh, for instance, we, we do the blackout chat on a Friday evening. Well, evening for me, it starts at 7 p.m. Uh, to around about 9 p.m. So, you know, that kind of cuts into the uh, practice time. Um, so there are specific things which do force that to alternate, to differ. But I do try and do some kind of evening practice. And then I'll go back to bed at 10 p.m. Um, there is a reason for the 10 p.m. If you do have a look into Ayurvedic practices, um, 10 p.m. is the time you should go to bed or just before then because when after 10 p.m. We, we go we start going into 
the energy which is very active and therefore our minds start to become active again so it's best to go to bed just before 10 p.m and get yourself into sleep and then you'll sleep right through that um so you know it's working with the energy which is present around and um you know uh, working with the energy so that we we can flow with it better um i am trying to get back the qigong practice because i find that is very beneficial for me um, just to keep my my energy balanced and moving properly um, so I'm going to start incorporating that probably midday. It's about a 20 minute practice, so it doesn't take much. So I'll probably do that um, just before lunch and then I'll go and have lunch. Um, and again, my lunch because I follow a loose Ayurvedic practice here. Um, it is very loose, but uh, I do find that it's it helps me with my digestion and, and such things. Um, so my lunch is just after 12 p.m. And again, that's working with the actual energies um, to allow the digestive system to actually work properly. Uh, so lunchtime is my biggest meal of the day, and then supper I'll have just something light. And it really has helped uh, with with digestion. Uh, and I'm losing weight, so wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that is daily practices, and I do encourage everybody to have a daily practice. Um, even if it's just something simple, even if it is just 10 or 15 minutes a day, um, you don't need to do hours and hours uh, like I try and do. Um, but you know, that fits in with my lifestyle and the things that I do, um, like te I, I mean, I teach spiritual practices. Um, so, you know, I've got to keep up with that as well. Um, so try and fit something in and the longer you can do it the more you can do the better the more benefit you're going to find um, but you know it doesn't need to be an hour or two hours long it can be 10 or 15 minutes as long as it's something just to keep the muscle exercised um, and then when you do your magical practice you'll definitely see the benefits um, you'll definitely see the improvements so uh, yeah hope that helps all right so that's it for today for our monday musings and i'll see you in the ask lee segment have a good one cheers for now bye bye